My name's Joel Hayes and this is my solar electric camper van behind me here. I'm a scientist, I uh, went to university to study climate change and now I'm living in a van. Keegan, together and this team essentially behind this van, we're called Route del Sol. Um, we're driving from Alaska all the way down to Argentina using this electric vehicle and its solar panels to get us there. We're trying to do the whole journey on renewable energy. I'm a journalist, that's my background, I'm a storyteller. Um, and we're really trying to ramp up this project and try and let as many people as possible know about you know this the whole world and their transition into renewable energy and especially within North and South America at the moment um, we're just trying to really encourage that through our own movement here so you want to come check out the van? <laughs> we have a big fridge door at the moment this is the first thing that we're probably going to replace when we get a chance it's just hectic and it doesn't really insulate the van too well it's quite heavy but if you come and step inside I can sort of show you a few things just like any any RV vehicle, we've got the whole setup. There's like a, 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 a kitchen. But where the magic actually happens for real in this van is inside of this cupboard here. Um, this is our off-grid solar setup. And I guess normally in a van, the vans that you'd be uh, interviewing, you'd see this setup quite a lot smaller. We have a huge eight kilowatt inverter here. Usually you'd have something a little bit smaller than that. You have this big charge controllers. We've got two because our solar system is so big on the roof. Um, we have over 6,000 watts of solar panels. So um, that's basically the magic behind this van. So one of the most uh, incredible things about driving an electric van is that we just have a surplus amount of electricity all the time. Um, so we have running hot water system. We have a fridge. Um, 12 volt? I think 24 volt. 24 so volt. The, the hot water system too is um, it's something that a lot of van lifers struggle with because energy wise, heating water up is a lot of energy. Uh, we have a surplus amount of energy. We actually have an on-demand hot water, electric hot water system. It's not propane, it's electric. So um, I think it's an eight kilowatt system. It's at the top of our energy demands as well. So um, it goes to show how much it takes to heat water up, but we have one. We're lucky enough to have one. We have a, an induction stove top. It's quite efficient. It does use a lot of energy though. It does, yeah. So, and then for our stir fries and our curries, we have an electric um, wok. And um, then this huge fridge too. The 95 quart um, DC, you can AC fridge too, but we have running DC because it's more efficient to run at DC. So 24 volts, we have a higher voltage and lower amperage because it's better for the drawer on the batteries. So uses next to no power and it goes through cycles. So it turns off and on and super, super good insulation. It's a chest fridge too, so when you open it, all the cold air doesn't just escape. Um, if you have the front doors, you open it, all the cold air just falls out of the fridge. So, yeah, that's why we chose the chest fridge. Plenty of storage space, uh, lots of windows. The windows open up, uh, they're ice cream, ice cream window windows. I don't know how else to explain them. <laughs> Emergency exits. Yeah, you just flick these two. Ice cream. And then we can serve everyone ice cream on the road. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> These obviously are bed wrap, but we take the mattresses off, we can lift it up, and then this becomes one big table, and it's kind of like a U-shape or horseshoe, I guess. Yeah. Um, we can all sit around. There's two bolts that go across. Um, I was sleeping in a hammock for the first little bit, um, but then it got kind of too cold with the wind underneath, so eventually, um, once we're back down, like towards like Central America and Mexico, definitely, um, either be sleeping in here in my hammock or outside, or even we're talking about under the solar panels on the roof, setting up two beds. Um, just like permanent mattresses, we can just sleep under the stars. It was built with the with the idea of having, you know, a production crew in here, a film crew almost, so to speak, in here working on it on the project. So, so there's like storage 
at the back there's a big storage thing we pull off this uh, wooden lid I guess and you can put things underneath on top of the battery and then also beside here there's two seats you could call them um, they both have storage too it's really hard to show you right now because it's all covered up but you can yeah it's just like a big lid that you can lift up underneath the beds too in the footwell area we can just slide things in there and store them um, at the moment yeah right. maybe the first month or so um, when I was sleeping in the hammock every night I would just every morning I would just like put it up there so we only had one bed made and then the other bed was just obviously the table and then, and then half the table mm -hmm. um, so we had to sit there and that was just like a workstation kind of thing in here you have um, classics like our foldaway chairs um, um, we got, I think, some tools under there it's as our, well. Our broom closet, but it has all of our, yeah, all of our, I guess, hand tools with jigsaws and circular saws. And then obviously these aren't covered up yet, but they will be one day. That's all bulkhead storage space up there. It's all really solid. Um, we have things like our drone fits up there, um, a massive drone that we need to replace. Fits up there. Some more tools like wrenches and hammers and, and then beside here is where I keep my surfboard. Um, I haven't used it too much yet so far but uh, that'll come in handy at some point in time. How did you insulate this van? Foam insulation so it's like not the most environmentally friendly but uh, at the time we were I guess financially limited so it's foam insulation it's I think one inch thick foam insulation. And how do you stay warm in the cold months or cold environments? I wear lots of clothes and we put lots of uh, covers on our bed <laughs> pretty much yeah we I mean we don't really have a heating system in here we do have like one of the byproducts of having an electric van is when we invert power from DC to AC um, the byproduct of that is heat which is also lost but um, so basically in doing that we have our own onboard electric heater so some nights we get, like if it's really cold, we can invert some power. I feel bad, I have a really hectic sleeping bag. Mm -hmm. And when we were up in north, we got caught in a few snowstorms and Jolly didn't have that. <laughs> we didn't have a sleeping bag and obviously we're quite separated, so. We can't we're cuddle. Spoon in, yeah. <laughs> when it does get cold, I, I just wear lots of socks and lots of uh, clothes and then get rugged up underneath some blankets. <laughs> and we're very much looking forward to Southern California yeah. and Mexico. <laughs> we have uh, two battery packs in here equaling a total of 120 kilowatt hours of energy. Um, it's quite a bit. I don't think even Tesla has, the best Teslas don't even have that much battery power in them. But the difference is we're not moving a Tesla, we're moving a big moving van. I don't know. We're moving Bus. a big ice cream truck. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to stick with that reference. It's an ice cream truck. So one is, comes with a vehicle stand. It's under our feet here. Um, and that's the 80 kilowatt hour pack. Um, it's lithium ion phosphate. And then we have another one that me and the team as well, mostly Brett Veland at Solar Roller built in the back here underneath our heads while we're sleeping. Um, and that's 40 kilowatt hours of lithium cobalt um, pouch cells. The way it works is we charge from the sun, we charge the back battery with our solar panels, and then we transfer that energy from there into our um, original battery pack. We know there's inefficiencies, but the reason we did that was because we couldn't really mess around too much with the propriety systems of the van. So what we're doing is we're just gonna pull the arms of the solar array out, um, and then we're gonna slide the whole array out like a drawer. So it's pretty simple, it's all manual. Um, I'd like to make this automatic at some point in time, just so that we don't have to mess around like we are now, but uh, it's it's not super hard, it's not super cumbersome. So, yeah. The arms just slide out like so. Yeah, so basically what we've done is we just folded the panels out. Um, each one of these panels is roughly around two kilowatts or 2,000 watts. Um, each individual panel is 330 watt, um, it's a 330 watt panel made up of individual um, sun power cells. If you just imagine each panel as an individual, so each panel of three is an individual um, system working to harness the sun's energy. So we've, we've set that up in a way specifically to charge that battery that we have, that size of battery that we have, yeah. So what this allows us to do is essentially, obviously charge our two batteries um, on a day like this, obviously it's quite cloudy and things like that, but we've actually, I just looked before, we've pulled in like 1.3 kilowatts. On a crappy day. On a really crappy day, and that's when the 
the panels, panels were actually folded in on each other. So now that everything's out, you, you know, now we can well, triple times it by three. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So if you're actually tracking the sun, so the solar panels are moving as the sun crests across the sky, you increase your efficiency by about 50%. Through a series of um, pulleys, we can lift these solar panels all the way up, essentially almost to a 45 degree angle. Um, and that allows us, and then we can move the fan, and that obviously allows us to move and track the sun. These are satellite panels, and much like the other ones, they're set up in a series of two. Um, and we kind of combine them all together because it's kind of like mismatched panels. Um, all the ones on the roof are all perfectly wired, I guess, so they work exactly the same. So we've combined all of our dodgy panels on the back here, and they they're actually really efficient when you put them out because you can angle them at the sun. And so one question that a lot of people ask, and I'm sure if I don't answer it now, I'm going to get shot. <laughs> While we're driving, we can charge our batteries. Just it's quite it's negligible. Um, like Keegan was explaining before, you get one third of the power. These back panels, there's a, there's a whole set of panels behind the front panels here that don't see the sun ever. Um, and obviously the two wings are folded in. So you do get up to two kilowatts worth of energy while you're driving, for the time that you're driving. Which is a lot. Which is a lot. But to actually charge the van, the van and to be able to like endlessly drive, yeah. like uh, unlimited driving, yeah. it's, it's, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not a perpetual possible. motion machine. <laughs> the most I've ever seen is like five kilowatts off those top panels from driving all day, which is quite a bit. It's more than what you could definitely use in a van normally. But for driving, I'd probably like it to, I like to try and put it into context. For driving, it's maybe like 10 miles, uh, to 15, 16 kilometers. Like it's not very far at all. So definitely best when we're stopped, we're angling perfectly, following that sun with all of our panels out. That's when we see like phenomenal amounts of energy coming in. And the last thing obviously is the cockpit. So this is where we spend a lot of our time. Um, sitting down on the pilot so I obviously get to uh, sit in the pilot seat I never let Keegan drive but that's a lie Keegan drives all the time it's like any other vehicle it drives the same it's got a gas pedal and a but it's not really a gas pedal it's an electric pedal um, and a brake pedal and just like any automatic vehicle except you have one of these strange key fob things um, instead of a key and you put your foot on the brake and hold it on this little eyelet here and then the van just goes through like a startup process. Does all of its checks. That's obviously we've got a, um, half a battery right now. When you're driving, you'll be able to see that there's a little uh, red meter that comes up here and that just shows you how much, um, how much energy you're actually using and it has regenerative braking as well. So when, we, um, when we're going downhill, um, this will actually switch over and that'll be a blue line and that means energy's actually coming back in. And then the last thing here is obviously our map. Uh, of our journey so far. So it's like one of the first things you see when you're coming in. Uh, that's where we started. So um, the Arctic Circle line, we literally s stood on the sign, we shaved our beards and then haven't grown them ever since. It looks, we've done the most like rural and remote probably section of this, this whole journey, except maybe potentially parts of Patagonia down here. Um, it took us about two months to get from um, A to B, so up there to here in Vancouver. And obviously the show's not there, but that's where we're from. <laughs> <laughs> we brought it a little bit closer. It's yeah. always close to that. Close to that. Yeah. I live in a van because I love traveling and I don't think there's a better way to see the places that you're traveling to than to have your home with you while you're there traveling. It's so convenient. Like it's literally, you have your, your home with you everywhere you go, especially like you finish off uni, you finish off work or whatever, and you're like, oh, I just want to get home. It's just like, my, my home's parked at the front. Like that's where my bed is. And then people would be like, hey man, like you can, you're welcome to like crash on my couch tonight if you like. And I'm like, nah, like my bedroom's like at the front. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, I really appreciate it, but no, it's actually okay. It forces you to always be outside. And I love the outdoors and I love being in the ocean. I love, you know, climbing and I love being, being in the forest and things like that. And so it, it, it forces you every single day to be doing that, whether you like it or not. Would you recommend this lifestyle to people and what type of person would you recommend it to? I would recommend it. I'd say beware, like it's not, it's not the most easy lifestyle. You definitely have to know how to rough it a little bit. Um, so it depends on who I'm talking to. But like, yeah, to the right person, I would definitely recommend that they live in it. And when people do tell me like, I bought a van, I usually get pretty excited. I'm usually like, yeah, this is gonna change your life. It's gonna make you feel 
like so free and, and open to opportunities and whatnot. So, yeah. The big three, I guess, is where do you shower, where do you go to the bathroom, and um, how do you keep warm? <laughs> They're like kind of the big three, and once you can tick those things off and give them really simple, practical answers, then it's like, oh, okay, like yeah. maybe I can actually do that. There's never been a easier time in, I guess, human history to live in a van than now, I'd say. And we're all connected in so many different ways to so many resources. Yeah. Maybe you guys could expand on some of the challenges that you face in this lifestyle. I think, like, for me, personal space inside of a small van is a big thing. But in saying that, it's not, like, a huge challenge because I'm a very social person. And I think, like, in the right environment, when you can sort of escape each other for, a, like, not to hate on you too much because I really like Keegan. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like, if I can just escape and, like, go for a surf by myself and clear my head, I think that would, you know, that's... that's um, that's a one way to overcome that sort of challenge. Like I know there's a lot of people out there who are in a relationship and they want to get into van life and they're like, I don't know how I'd cope being around my partner that intensely that often. I mean, my advice is just to, you know, choose places to go or to live that, uh, that you know, you do have the ability to escape each other and, and, you know, spend time away from each other. When I first started living in a van, um, was in Australia in the beginning of last year. And one of my biggest challenges, which I have really gratefully overcome, but I really struggled spending a lot of time by myself. And that was, I think it's a really common theme throughout a lot of van lifers. They are potentially, a lot of them can be quite extroverted people and they love being around other people. And that's actually the reason why they initially moved into the van to travel and meet other people and things like that. But you actually do spend a lot of time by yourself and um, I got really good at it after a couple of weeks and led into a couple of months and I started really just enjoying time by myself and I still definitely love spending time with other people but I now have that like both introverted and extroverted side of side of me. Yeah. You think we're both coming at it from a completely different angle like I've never lived in a van by myself so Obviously, like, I've never had that space to myself, which I actually would really <laughs> like, I would think, like, to have that time. Because I do like to... I'm a very, like, up here sort of person. So, like, I do, I need that time to, to process things and clear things. I think if I sp go off and spend five minutes by myself, that'll fuel me for a week. Yeah, sure. It doesn't... I don't re rely on that. Where, so, my understanding of introvert and extrovert is extroverts you know, recharged by being around other people and introverts recharged by being around, by spending time by themselves. Mm. And you can be quite a cliched extroverted person, but you're actually a hardcore introvert because you, you know, you need other people. You need to be by yourself to recharge. Um, so I think, I think we're opposites on that front. Yep. I'd say I'm quite extrovert and you're quite introverted. <laughs> what would you say to somebody that's maybe watched a couple of YouTube videos and is thinking about doing this? Give it a go, right? Like it's so easy. It's literally so easy to just, to just try it. It's, it's cheaper, it's more free. Uh, I don't know. There's just so many positives for oh, you just save so giving much it a go. Money. Yeah. Jamie, think about you're you just literally like remove either your mortgage or your rent from your life, which are the two main expenses in life. Uh, aside from the odd parking ticket here or there, or the odd wake up call at 1 a.m. because you're parked in some place that you're not allowed to be, it's literally like just. A thousand times better. What's the future for you two with your van life? We're heading south. We got to make tracks. We got to get to uh, Argentina and Tierra del Fuego. So I mean, that's the overarching goal of this van life journey: is that um, we both keep traveling south until we make it there in this specific way. Obviously, with the solar electric camper van. The exact goal is literally to like inspire those that have answers to issues social or environmental whatever political people who have answers to those issues is just to inspire them to literally take action it's like your friend who wants to buy a van you know we're like go buy it give it a go it can't hurt that's the same thing i want to do with this this whole message really is just to inspire people to just give it a go like you know lots of people are standing in stagnant thing what what can i do what what can i do literally personally and I think like lots of people have lots of good answers and ideas and potentially they're just a little bit scared to jump over the edge and do it. And then if you had to sum up, what would your personal philosophy on life be? <laughs> oh, <laughs> that is a big question, man. You go, because I need time to think. 
That's a big one, yeah. I'm an introvert, man. You can't ask an introvert <laughs> that question. <laughs> um, I would say that change is our only constant. So be always aware that change is going to happen in your life and it can be good and can be bad, but it can my own personal belief is that it always is good. You might not be able to see it at that time and place. You might not be able to see it for 20 years, but it's it's important. And our society is always, is always constantly changing. And um, you need to, I want to be able to foster that. I want to be able to push for that because it's, yeah, like I said, it's really, really important. And especially with Root Del Sol and you know, how our world is right now is transitioning towards renewable energy. Um, that, that is a change that people are scared of and people are, have been relying on other industries for so long and it's just like fundamentally it needs to change because our world is changing anthropogenic climate change is a really serious issue that we're all currently facing yeah change is the only constant so just accept it because it's happening <laughs> i think like for me it's just constantly strive for balance and um harmony within yourself because i think that's when humans are most lethal so to speak they achieve the most when they're when they're in that space you know and I think you achieve it through a number of ways um, one of them I think the main thing is just consciousness to what's going on around you to the people that are around you when you listen to people and what they have to say um, and also the planet itself you know when it speaks to you in certain ways if you really get in tune with that I think yeah you, you can really do wondrous things in life and yeah I think that's pretty much it for me. And where can people find you if they want to follow your journey? Rookdale Soul, R-O-U-T-E-D-E-L-S-O-L. Um, we have a website, so .com, uh, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. We don't have Twitter, and we're going to get Reddit pretty soon, so look out for us on all those platforms. Rookdale Soul, we're trying to build a community that we can bring with us on the entire journey and really try and share the stories of the communities and individuals living with or without access to clean energy and we want to try and document people's experiences around that and we also want to be able to have the ability and within our community to be able to sh connect and network with these people to be able to provide better conversation around this, these issues and potential um, solutions to be able to help people, especially as we head down you know, south of the US border into Mexico and into Central America and South America, we want to be able to have long lasting impact within these communities, you know, be able to share their stories and say, hey, like, talk to these people, that, you know, these people might be interested in what you're doing here and you know, be able to network and connect. So like, if you have any type of idea of what, who we should be talking to or any connection that we should get involved with, like, let us know. Like, mm -hmm. we promise that we will absolutely reply to anyone and every, anyone that wants to just share with us their stoke about the project or give us advice. What's up guys, it's Forrest. Thank you so much for watching that video. Please hit like and subscribe to this channel if you're not already. Right below me right now is a playlist of a whole bunch of videos I've done on alternative dwellings, vans, sailboats, tiny homes, all sorts of good stuff. So go ahead and click that link and continue watching. Thanks so much and I'll see you next week. I upload every single Monday at 7.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time.